In this video, I'm going to show you an easy, beginner-friendly method of growing and propagating your terrarium plants. Let's get straight into it with the materials that you're going to need. Firstly, you're going to need a container with a lid for the plants to grow in. It can be bigger or smaller than this one, but just make sure it has a lid. The box will keep the humidity high, which is required for most terrarium plants to thrive. This here is some egg crate light diffuser, and I'll be using it for the drainage layer slash false bottom. As for the substrate, all you're going to need is some sphagnum moss. This stuff is great for growing and propagating plants, and it's really not too hard to get hold of. You're also going to need some small pots. I like to use square ones, but round pots also work just fine. If you're on a budget, you can even cut off the bottom half of a plastic bottle. Just make sure whatever you use has drainage holes in the bottom. Obviously, to propagate plants, you're going to need some plants to start off with. These are cuttings I've pulled out from some of my ecosystems. I'll put links to all these materials in the description below. I've already rehydrated the sphagnum moss with water, but there's one more thing that needs to be done before it's ready to go in the pots. I'm putting it in the microwave for a couple minutes. Doing this stops it from coming back to life and taking over the propagations. It also eliminates any pests that might have been living inside. Whilst the moss cools down, let's start preparing the tub. I'm going to use the egg crate to make a drainage layer. I've cut a couple pieces down and now I'm clipping them together to form a single sheet. I can then simply place it inside the tub. The pots can then sit on top and any excess water would drain straight through to the bottom of the tub. As you can see, 15 of these pots fit inside really nicely. I have cut the tops off some of them to get them fitting properly, but this isn't a problem at all. Now the sphagnum moss has cooled down, it's time to get it inside the pots. Ideally, you don't want it too wet, so here's a good way to get it to the right moisture level. I'm simply taking a handful and squeezing as much of the water out as I can. This leaves it nice and damp, but not soggy or wet at all. I can now pull it apart and gently pack it inside the pot. I'm pressing it down into the pot, but not compressing it too much. Here's one pot filled up, so now I'm going to go ahead and get on with the rest. With all the pots ready, it's time to start propagating. There are a couple different ways of placing the plants in the moss depending on what species they are. This here is oak leaf creeping fig, which is a climbing plant. When propagating climbers, I find the easiest way of planting them is simply laying them on top of the moss and gently pressing them down. I've had really good success with this method. This here is Solanum Ecuador, and once again, it's a climbing plant, so I'm simply going to lay it on top of the moss. Although these cuttings have no roots at the moment, they'll grow their own healthy root system in no time at all. Next up, I want to turn this single McGravia cutting into multiple plants. These two bottom cuttings will soon grow their own growth points, and I'll have essentially turned one plant into three. So far, all the plants have been climbers, so let me show you how I'll go about propagating this Photonia. These are some cuttings that I've taken and all I'm going to do is plant them into the moss up to the first set of leaves. They'll send out roots and start growing in no time at all. To keep track of all the different species, I like to place in a small name tag. You can also write the date to keep a note of how long the plant's been growing. Here's the tub completely filled up with different plants that I want to propagate. Before showing you what a couple months growth looks like, let's quickly talk about the care. There's really not much to it and all I do is check up on them every week to make sure they're not drying out. If any plants or leaves do appear to be dying, I'll take this opportunity to remove them. Obviously, plants can't grow without light, so let's talk about that next. I've got these under some under-cabinet LED lights which are on for 12 hours a day. These do work well, but a cheap aquarium light will probably work even better. If you wanted, you can even use natural light, but just make sure you avoid direct sun. I've left the propagations to grow for over two months, but I have been checking up on them every week or so. I haven't had to do much other than a light spray down two or three times. For the most part, everything has started to grow in really quite nicely. There have been a couple stems die off, but this is expected as you're never going to get a 100% success rate. The oak leaf creeping fig is doing exceptionally well and it's only going to get better as the cuttings have now established. Here's another tub full of propagations using the same method which is absolutely thriving. All these plants can be left to grow out even more or be used in terrariums and other ecosystems. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, you might be interested in my beginner terrarium making ebook.
I'll leave a link in the description. As always, thank you for watching.